Jack Elam's second wife reveals his last moments before tragic ending. Jack Elam was born William Scott Elam on November 13, 1920, in Miami, Arizona, hailed from humble beginnings. Raised during the Great Depression, Elam experienced a challenging childhood that shaped his strong character and resilience. His father, Millard Elam, worked as a mining engineer, and his mother passed away when Jack was just two years old. After his mother's death, he and his sister were raised by relatives, leading to a somewhat tumultuous upbringing. Jack lost the sight in his left eye in a childhood accident involving a pencil, which left his eye misaligned and gave him his distinctive look. This lazy eye would later become a defining characteristic of his career and appearance in Hollywood, where he would parlay it into a recognizable feature, often cast in villainous roles. Before Elam became an iconic face in Hollywood, he worked in a far less glamorous field. He attended Phoenix Union High School and later worked as a bookkeeper for various businesses, including the Bank of America and, later, as an auditor for the Los Angeles city government. His career in accounting even led him to work for Samuel Goldwyn Studios, a job that would eventually become his ticket to the movie business. However, accounting didn't spark passion in Elam, who longed for something more adventurous and engaging. His big break came when he was introduced to the world of acting by Hollywood insiders who noticed his unique appearance and encouraged him to try out for film roles. In the late 1940s, Jack Elam made his film debut with small roles in westerns and crime films. His sinister look, enhanced by his misaligned eye, led to frequent typecasting as a villain, and he quickly became the go-to actor for roles involving gunslingers, outlaws, and corrupt officials. One of his earliest notable roles was in She Shoulda Said No. 1949, a film about the dangers of marijuana use. Although it was a minor part, Elam's presence on screen caught the attention of filmmakers. His performances in Kansas City Confidential, 1952, and High Noon, 1952, further solidified his reputation as a menacing villain. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, Jack Elam became a mainstay in Western films, often cast as the antagonist in classics such as Gunfight at the O.K. Corral, 1957, and The Man from Laramie, 1955. His piercing stare, combined with his gruff voice and rugged demeanor, made him a perfect fit for the bad guys in Hollywood's golden age of westerns. Elam's villains were more than just one-dimensional characters, he brought an unsettling charm and humor to many of his roles, making them memorable and, in some cases, even likable in their own twisted way. One of his standout performances was in Once Upon a Time in the West, 1968, directed by Sergio Leone. In the film's opening sequence, Elam plays one of three hired guns waiting for Charles Bronson's character at a train station. Though there is almost no dialogue, Elam's expressive face and physicality steal the scene. His performance in this film demonstrated his ability to convey depth and personality with minimal words, proving his talent was not limited to stereotypical villainy. In the late 1960s and 1970s, Elam began transitioning from strictly villainous roles to more comedic characters. While he had long been typecast as a heavy, his natural comedic timing and sharp wit allowed him to explore a new side of his acting career. His appearances in films like Support Your Local Sheriff, 1969, and Support Your Local Gunfighter, 1971, highlighted his versatility as an actor. In these roles, Elam portrayed bumbling, eccentric characters, often the complete opposite of the cold-blooded killers he was known for playing in westerns. His role as Jake in Support Your Local Sheriff became particularly beloved by audiences, showcasing his comedic brilliance. With his exaggerated expressions, impeccable timing, and grumpy yet endearing demeanor, Elam stole scenes and won over fans who appreciated his ability to balance humor and absurdity. This newfound versatility extended his career well into the 1970s, as he became a fixture in both comedic and dramatic roles in television and film. Jack Elam's career wasn't confined to the silver screen, he also made a significant impact on television. He became a familiar face on popular TV westerns, including Bonanza, The Rifleman, Gunsmoke, and The Twilight Zone. In the television industry, Elam worked prolifically, 
bringing his distinctive style to episodes of well-known series that capitalized on his ability to play memorable, unique characters. One of his most notable TV roles was in the series The Dakotas, 1963, where he played Deputy J.D. Smith. His portrayal of the lawman was different from his typical villain roles, and it allowed him to demonstrate more complexity as a character actor. The television medium allowed him to experiment with different kinds of roles, further proving that his range extended beyond the grizzled, one-eyed bad guy. In the 1980s, Elam starred alongside James Garner in the hit show Brett Maverick. His character, Philo Sandine, became another fan favorite, and the show offered Elam yet another opportunity to combine his tough guy persona with humor. Jack Elam continued working into the late 1980s and early 1990s, appearing in a mixture of television shows and films. His later career saw him take on more fatherly, elder statesman roles, where he played grizzled but wise older men with a softer side. Despite his age, Elam never lost the enthusiasm for acting, and his work remained consistent in quality. He appeared in Cannonball Run, 1981, and its sequel Cannonball Run 2, 1984, where he brought his signature eccentric humor to the role of Dr. Nicholas Van Helsing. Elam was married twice, first to Jean Louise Hodgert from 1937 until her death from colon cancer on January 24, 1961. Seven months later, in August 1961, Elam married again, then to Margaret M. Jennison. The couple remained together for 42 years, until 2003, when Jack died of congestive heart failure at their home in Ashland, Oregon. Though Elam passed away on October 20, 2003, at the age of 82, his legacy in Hollywood is undeniable. Over the course of his 50-year career, Jack Elam appeared in more than 200 films and television episodes. His ability to switch between villainy and comedy, and his memorable physical presence, earned him a lasting place in the hearts of moviegoers and film historians alike. Jack Elam's contribution to the film industry, especially the Western genre, cannot be overstated. He is often remembered as one of the quintessential Western villains, a character actor who made the most out of every role he was given. However, his career also serves as a tribute to the power of perseverance and talent. Despite being typecast for many years, Elam continually found ways to push boundaries and explore new aspects of his craft. He was a trailblazer for character actors in Hollywood, showing that even those who played supporting roles could leave a lasting impact. His distinctive look, forged through adversity, became his trademark, and he turned what could have been a setback into an asset that defined his career. Jack Elam's ability to captivate audiences, whether through fear or laughter, remains his enduring gift to the world of entertainment. His contributions to the Western genre, television, and comedy will continue to be celebrated by fans and critics alike for generations to come.